portfolios. They are the most revealing pieces of information about you. They reveal who you are, what you like, what is your style, what is it that you are good at, and what is it that you are hiding and not showing. They reveal your talents and skills, and they speak for themselves. Most people who get rejected because of their portfolios don't pay attention to these 10 rules that I'm just about to tell you by the end of this video. But how do I know? In my architecture career, I tried to develop a good eye for designing architecture portfolios. And I've seen hundreds of really good and tons of really bad portfolios. I have seen which portfolios make it to the good universities and land good job offers. And I have revised my own portfolio tens of times in order to get my desired job or to be accepted in a university of my choice. I also teach students and graduates design their portfolios up to the world-class standards and help them land their desired job offer and get accepted in the universities that they always wanted to study in. So if you are looking to improve your architecture portfolio and apply for jobs or university, sit back and take a note of these 10 rules that I'm just about to tell you in this video. Hello friends and welcome back to the channel. If you don't know me, my name is Amir and I'm a part two architecture graduate based in London. And in this channel, I talk about architecture from different perspectives. Let's now begin from the start. Number one from the list starts from the cover page of your portfolio. So number one, write your full name with the date of your works in the cover page. In your cover page, the reviewer looks for three things. First, your name, then the way you have designed the cover page, which tells a lot about the rest of your portfolio. And also, they look for the dates of the works you have put in your portfolio. For example, if you have projects from 2020 up until 2022, just write it down as selected works from 2020 to 2022. This way, the reviewer would know how old or recent your works are, and also how much progress you have made since 2020. Number two, include your CV in the beginning of your portfolio. A very important task for you is to make sure you have included your CV in the very beginning of your portfolio, even if you're sending a separate file for your CV to the employer. By the way, never send a CV alone. You have to always include your portfolio with your CV. So the best way to do that is including your CV in your portfolio. You kind of want to make sure that your CV gets the attention that it deserves, as well as highlighting your skills for the reviewer before they start to see your skills in your actual work. So they know which skills to look for in your portfolio. Number three, include a content page. Having a content page helps to explain the structure of your portfolio to the reviewer. Make sure you mention which project is a uni project and which project is a work experience project. If you include your work experience project, make sure you mention your role on the project as well as your contributions. Number four, make a dedicated introduction page for each of your projects. A dedicated page for introducing your project helps in different ways. First, it makes your portfolio structured visually. As someone flips through your work, they understand where does your project start and where does your project end. Secondly, it provides the most important information about your project in one glance, like project's name, purpose, client, size, and location. And thirdly, 
it provides an opportunity for you to make the reviewer excited about the project by showing one of the best renders of the project in that page. Number five, make sure you include at least five different types of work in your portfolio. And what do I mean by that? When you design your portfolio, you want to showcase a range of skills in different types of work. You don't necessarily have to be amazing in all of them, but you want to show that you definitely have some capability of doing multiple things, at least in good basic levels. So make sure you have these five types of work, including renders, sketches, diagrams, orthographic drawings and details, and finally, physical models. Number six, leave enough gaps for your work to breathe. Now, this is very important. There are people who are very talented and have amazing work, but they chunk all of their work in one page or organize them badly in a page where their work doesn't have enough room to breathe. This simply kills the quality of your work that you want to present because they will not get appreciated as much as they should and leave the reviewer tired and disinterested in your work. So make sure you choose your border margin quite wide and leave enough gaps between your work in every page. Rule number seven, keep your font and text sizes consistent. Another mistake that I have seen a lot in people's portfolios is that their text gets bigger or smaller in different pages or even sometimes their font changes further on in their portfolio. This is a deadly mistake that shows inconsistency in your design and in your style. Make sure all of your titles, all of your body texts and all of your smaller texts follow a particular size in all pages. You simply cannot have your title in 21 in one page and have it in 18 in another. And trust me, these mistakes can be spotted very easily and they can be very embarrassing. Rule number eight, aim between 25 to 30 pages of portfolio. A good portfolio is a short and concise portfolio, which highlights the best recent works of the candidate in 25 to 30 pages. By making your portfolio extensive, you are probably including some work which has lesser quality than the rest of your work, or that you are including some work which either is neutral or is a repetition of the skills that you've already highlighted in your other work. So keep your portfolio concise and keep it short and try not to exceed more than 30 pages of work. Rule number nine, Label your work everywhere. If you are putting a work, whether it is a render, a sketch, a diagram, label it. Explain what it is in a tiny short sentence below the image and don't assume that people would know what the image is all about by themselves. In the projects from your work experience, also say if you have done the actual work yourself or you have had a contribution or simply the work is not done by you. And finally, rule number 10 tailor your work to the destination. If you're applying to a university like Bartlett where people do a lot of atmospheric and conceptual renders, you simply have a tiny chance of getting in if all of your renders look like developers marketing brochure design. You need to pay attention to the destination where you are sending your portfolio and select your work wisely according to what is appropriate for that kind of university or that kind of office that you're sending your portfolio to. Yes, this means sometimes you have to do some extra work for producing a certain type of work which you don't necessarily have it in your portfolio but think it's necessary for getting a job in a dream architecture office or the university that you always wanted to go to. But the effort will definitely pay off if you increase the chances of getting accepted by just putting a little bit of more effort into it. Now, these 10 rules are essential to pay attention to every time you design an architecture portfolio. But bear in mind that they are not the only things to pay attention to. There are so many other things that you need to consider and be mindful of. For example, the style of your portfolio and its consistency throughout your work. And the best way to get these things right is to look at the best precedent examples 
of really good portfolios from websites like Behance or Issue. Unfortunately, you have to identify which portfolios are good and which ones are not by yourself. But the moment you learn to distinguish between a good and a not good portfolio, you're halfway ahead in designing your portfolio. Also to create sketchy diagrams and sketchy renders, I highly recommend using an iPad to produce really high quality sketches very fast by just tracing over existing drawings in Procreate. I have in fact made a whole video about this, which I'll put the link in the description and also up there if you want to check it out. I also share some useful resources sometimes in my newsletter, again, link in the description if you want to check it out, where I send weekly emails about pivot points of my week where I talk about a podcast that I listened to or a thought that I had in that week or a conversation I had with an architect or a friend which sparked an idea in my mind and I also share some resources and some things to do if you're in London so it's it's a fun little newsletter if you want to check it out again link in the description if you found this video useful please give it a like and consider subscribing to the channel to be updated every time I post a video like this. I hope you have a great rest of today and see you in the next video.